Thank you. All right, uh, back onto court here in Johannesburg. Uh, next encounter, South Africa, Rwanda. And uh, first foul called against Rwanda. Mo Moletti will put up the uh, two point shot, but wayward. Shaq, Shaq puts up the shot and the uh, ball doesn't drop. Rahetsi Moletti finds Alan Matatasi, puts up the shot and gets the first points for South Africa. out of bounds there by South Africa, Moretti, and uh, I wonder if we'll have the chicken with uh, Munyaneza Diodone. Meshek puts up the shot and he gets Rwanda's first point, so scores the level, South Africa one, Rwanda one. South Africa three, Alan Matatate puts up the other shot, and uh, South Africa two, Rwanda one. there by the South Africans, but uh, unable to gain control of it. Uh, fortunately for the South Africans, ball tipped out of play by Rwanda. So, Rahetsi Moleti will find Alan Matatase. Alan will put up the shot. Uh, doesn't drop on that occasion. Quite a competent shooter is Matatase. Plays in the French leagues. 
Misak fouled by Monetti and he will go to the free throw line for a shot. Shaka unable to uh, convert. I'm joined in the uh, commentary box here with the uh, vice president of RWBF Africa as well as. Uh, one of the directors of Wheelchair Basketball South Africa and uh, Vice President of Basketball South Africa, Mr. Sibongili Fondini. Sibongili, welcome to the commentary booth. How have you found everything going so far? Uh, everything, you know, is quite awesome, if I may put it that way. You know, we are quite excited in a way in which the tournament has been running so far. Very, very exciting and good game of basketball at display. I am so, so, so excited. In our previous conversation with uh, Ed Edwin from Kenya, he alluded to the fact that our uh, um, COVID protocols have been very well, ad well uh, adhered to. Uh, your particular function in this uh, event has been exactly that role. Um, from, from that perspective, obviously with the pandemic and the way that you know, it just affected the global sports uh, events, uh, how have you found uh, things have gone? And, and um, what good news do we have from this tournament? I'm, I'm hoping no, no bad news at all. Uh, well, basically, uh, it, it was the key measure for this tournament. Otherwise, if we had not invested or made sure that you know the safety precautions given uh, the pandemic were all put in place and, and very proper in doing so, we would not be having all of these many countries uh, coming uh, to participate in this tournament. As you would know, quite many tournaments even at this point in time around the world uh, are still not continuing simply because uh, many people are still afraid. But uh, with this tournament, you know, safety precautions have been our uh, very, very, very first and a, a key uh, a issue uh, in terms of making sure that you know uh, we deliver a very very safe tournament where we've done so uh, in the previous tournament here in South Africa and obviously we have few, several, few several tournaments which have already taken place and all of them you know have been delivered without any incident or not even a single case which has been reported uh, after or before the tournament. Back on court and uh Rwanda putting up a good show here. They uh, trail South Africa by two points. Uh, six to South Africa, four to Rwanda. <coughs> All right, so South Africa, seven, Rwanda, four. Um, Ms. Fondini, in terms of... Um, development of the sport uh, you also you also wear the hat of uh, uh, being involved in the, the, the southern zone both in able body as, as well as uh, uh, wheelchair basketball uh, what, what does the future look in terms of development of the of wheelchair basketball in the zone well basically uh, uh, one would have noted that you know when we came in as a new leadership in 2020 and and soon after you know we were confronted by the pandemic uh, but that did not put us you know down in terms of ensuring that the plans that we have set for ourselves you know were implemented and we are beginning to see the results of all those plans which were set out early last year when the new committee in africa was set up and obviously uh, in the zone itself uh, uh, which is uh, you know the entire continent uh, in terms of development in this tournament alone we are seeing new countries uh, which you know have come as a result of our plans and engagements uh, with their respective uh, Ol 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 Olympic and Paralympics committees in terms of getting them uh, to come back to the sport of wheelchair basketball in the continent. And I'm happy to say today uh, we're even seeing increased numbers in terms of the teams that are participating, given uh, even uh, the fact that we are under still we are still under the pandemic. So I think uh, 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 the plan that we have put are still working for us, and we are seeing uh, the results and the progress. 
Moleti for South Africa unable to convert. I wonder, Devin, if you're uh, showing a, a marked improved mint uh, uh, to the earlier games. And, uh, you know, obviously some, some of the newer countries taking a bit of time to adjust to, to this format of the game. But uh, uh, already we can see some improvement from some of the newer countries. Indeed, uh, and obviously uh, this is one of the things which we've put at the center of our development plan, that is to get the countries uh, to adapt in this new format of the game. It's the easiest and it's the quickest, and, and, and I'm happy that those that have come out here and said, uh, look, we could have done this uh, quite longer than we have just done it, and it's obviously working for everybody in the continent. Uh, it's the easiest way to even uh, get everyone to pay attention and to actually assist them further uh, with the with the full format of the game so i'm happy that you know the ones that are here you know are learning so much and they appreciate you know the efforts that have been by made, made by every country to try and assist them uh, whilst they are also in this competition as well all right rwanda with position working hard to try and stay in this game uh, so there we go through cecil demont pick up position he'll play in samangambeli and Samanga Bailey should convert, he does. So South Africa 9, Rwanda 4. Of course, uh, from a South African perspective, uh, Simongile, the, uh, the women's team have uh, qualified for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, all South Africans will be very chuffed with that. Uh, well, it's a great day uh, for Team South Africa and obviously in the entire country. Uh, I am saying that because, you know, I, I, I am very proud where I come from. And a lot of work obviously has been done quite recently for women, uh, uh, for wheelchair basketball in South Africa. And I'm happy that we are seeing those results. And uh, for them to qualify, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of inspiration uh, to a lot of women uh, who are already involved in the sport itself. And obviously many more. Uh, that we are busy working with it through our development racks in the country. So I'm quite excited, and I know they are very much excited, and congratulations to them as well. Back to the, the men's uh, side of things, and South African men are leading by 11 points to four. Just um, over four minutes to play. Shot clock violation, uh, Rwanda unable to, to convert, and now South Africa will start the attack with Alan Matatase looking to get the ball to Samanga Mbele and he draws the foul against the, the Rwandans Matatase looking to put up the shot. Bit short on that occasion. But uh, Matatase has had, a, had a, a good tournament so far. He uh, seems to be shooting at a high percentage. You see, I don't necessarily have the stats in front of me, but uh, having a good game. I, I, I'm happy that his performance continues. Uh, to be at its peak and obviously having seen him in the recent tournaments and I'm happy even with this tournament that he's been quite consistent and it's just good for the team. Absolutely, he's an he's a inspirational uh, leader on and off the court, uh, a player that uh, spent many years as a non-traveling reserve with the South African teams and he never gave up, he never threw in the towel and uh, now he's playing at the highest level and of course plays his uh, club wheel to basketball uh, in, in the French League so one for the, the, the children out there watching uh, Alan Matatate is a, a role model for, for all of the players out there absolutely uh, that's what perseverance does uh, for anyone and uh, uh, with his background and obviously having returned from uh, his career overseas and I'm just quite excited with how he even uh, shares his experience uh, obviously having played basketball at such a highest level as you've already said you know it didn't just come overnight and, and I'm happy that he still continues uh, to play the sport that he truly loves and continues to uh, mentor other young players even the players who he has been uh, playing with for many years but continues to assist them in their play and of course uh, Alan, uh, Alan's also a an accomplished coach, he led the South African under-23 team to the 
2017 uh, Under-23 World Championship in Toronto. Um, so he gained a lot of uh, experience there. And uh, I think once he once he uh, calls it a day on court, uh, yep. we, we have a good coach in the making. Uh, that's what makes us very proud of him uh, because we, we're still going to see much of him uh, even beyond his day as, as, as a player. And having uh, you know assisted the country to go to Toronto. So uh, we've got uh, uh, a man in wheelchair basketball that is going to do a lot of things for this country. And we are so very proud of him. Good pass there by Mbele and Cecil Dumont. Dumont unable to convert. Muleti picks up the rebound, they regroup, 10 seconds on the clock, and Bele will set up the shot, and uh, unable to convert it on that ca occasion, Majak grabs the rebound, but Dumont knocks it out, so Rwanda will have the put in from the 3x3 Infinity logo that you see on the court there. Rwandan number seven here uh, for Nini. Looks like he's got some, uh, some good potential. Um, obviously, uh, the Rwandans uh, got a lot to, to learn in the development, but just looking at some of the fundamentals, it looks like there's some, something to work with there. Well, basically, uh, 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 having been working on the floor today, you know, being interacting with some of the people on the ground, uh, he's amongst uh, the players who approached me uh, to say, look, uh, I'm so excited about this tournament, you know, there's quite a lot of players who've got so much talent, and, you know, we're so excited in getting this thing going even back home. And he was just quite recently asking the uh, conduct numbers at where he can continuously uh, get people to assist him with his game. And I'm quite happy and having seen him play in the previous games, and I think uh, he's a guy who's got a lot of potential, and he spoke about, uh, you know, assisting many players back to his country uh, to get them to a level where they can actually mature in the sport of basketball. And of course, uh, R Rwanda, uh, as a country as a whole, they've uh, done f fantastic development uh, in, in infrastructure. One of the probably the best, one of the two best uh, basketball uh, stadiums in Africa. Um, so I'm sure if Rwandan able-bodied basketball continues to support the wheelchair basketball, Rwanda could become a force in wheelchair basketball in Africa. Absolutely, you know, everybody is talking about Rwanda today. Uh, even back home, uh, you know, I've been to conferences uh, around sport and around how they want to attract, uh, you know, big sport uh, uh, events. And they speak about Rwanda as an example at how they've transformed themselves uh, into now uh, the destination where everybody wants to go and visit. So with that, obviously, you know, the support will definitely will be there. And, and I know that, you know, some of the people that have been to that country, uh, you know, uh, do agree that, you know, it's a country that now has got a lot of potential, not only in infrastructure, but its own people, you know, are now committed in making sure that they make the country work. And I'm quite sure that they, 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 the, the, the federation itself will receive also a lot of support, uh, even on able body to try and make sure that, you know, uh, there's inclusivity in how they are implementing their programs in order to make sure that the wheelchair basketball also takes its place in the continent. Yeah, and to further add to that uh, comment that you made there, um, the fact that they hosted the uh, inaugural Basketball Africa League uh, finals uh, is testament to the, the great work that they are doing. So Rwanda, Rwanda is definitely one to watch out for in the future, and uh, it's all started here. Abs in South Africa. Absolutely. One can be proud of that to say it all began here, the inspiration all became here in the home of basketball uh, in Mandeville. But there's no doubt, you know, in a matter of time, I know that Rwanda will be out there and obviously even South Africa itself uh, will start to learn uh, one thing or two uh, when they come back to this country. So South Africa pulling away... Um, 17-5 in, in, in the lead at the moment, but a much better uh, showing from the Rwandans and uh, pleasing to see that they are uh, starting to get the hang of it. Uh, South Africa 18, Rwanda 5, and South Africa will be looking to try and uh, finish off the game with their 21 points. They managed to do so in the last two games, uh, despite a bit of a slow start to, against the Rwandans. Shot clock violation, so... Moletti will look to put up the two-point shot, but he decides rather to play to Mbele. Finds Dumont, and Dumont uh, takes the score up to 
19 for South Africa, 5 to Rwanda. Just over a minute to play. Emmanuel for Rwanda and uh, Dumont picks it up, drops it behind his back to Mbele, puts up the last ditch shot but the shot clock buzzer goes off and 46 seconds left, 19 to South Africa, 6 to Rwanda. As the clock winds down, just a big thank you uh, Sibungiri for joining us. Uh, in the commentary booth and uh, at, uh, one of the um, hard-working uh, men of uh, RWBF Africa East. Uh, we'd like to thank you for all the hard work you put into not only the, the wheelchair basketball but also to able body basketball on the continent. Uh, thanks uh, Jerry and obviously it's always a teamwork and uh, obviously the work that everybody is seeing even on different platforms uh, tells the story that you know we are a team indeed and we are making things happen and we thank you as well sir, for all the good work that you are doing for the sport of basketball and wheelchair basketball. Thank you very much. Yes, 19 to South Africa, 6 to Rwanda, uh, 20 seconds left. Can South Africa finish the game off? Moletti will look for the two-point shot, puts it up, and he wins the game for South Africa. 21, South Africa, 6 to Rwanda, and uh, we will be uh, coming back to you now with the game between Kenya and Gambia. Uh, we'll be back shortly.